Why is there an engine on the ground? So, when I bought the truck, it was having a misfire issue. So, a lot of the LBZs that I've torn apart, it's either been broken crank or cracked piston. LBZs and LMMs, LMLs as well. But this engine might be an LLY or LB7 bottom end. And the reason I say that is because I looked through some of the previous owners, uh, looked, did some research on Facebook, found some posts in some groups. This truck had a broken crankshaft in it at one point. And one of the posts that one of the old owners posted on Facebook was, can you put an LLY bottom end into an LBZ? And what would you have to change? Well, the simple answer is yes. You can put an LLY bottom end in an LBZ. Um, you're gonna have to change the tone ring on the camshaft as well as the uh, reluctor wheel on the crankshaft. I don't know how long the truck had been running and driving. That post was made back in 2022. I bought the truck. Right now it's 2024, um, August. Yeah, middle of August 2024 is when I bought the truck. Um, and I bought it non-running. So videos that I got from the previous owner is that the truck would drive fine, but you couldn't rev it over 2200 RPM or it would misfire. So... It didn't make any weird noises. There was no blow by, so pistons were good. Crank is good, but we're suspecting something wasn't swapped out in the LLY that would work correctly with the LBZ platform. So I tore the motor apart, expecting possibly a sheared cam pin. So I looked at all these push rods, uh, wanted to make sure that they were all straight, None of them look bent. Uh, if you guys know Duramaxes, you know that sometimes these cam pins will shear off. As you can see, this one is still intact. Uh, the crank pins are still intact, except for the balancer. But this was not the issue because they had an alignment dowel or a do-it-yourself keyway in the crank, which you can see here in the harmonic balancer. So yeah, look for bent push rods. And then next, I brought a LBZ slash LMM cam gear. So these have this ring system on here that is supposed to help with uh, keeping the mesh tight or the gear mesh tight so it doesn't make any noise. But like I said, LBZ LMM. And this is actually an LB7 cam gear. It is one solid cam gear. doesn't have the ring system in it to keep tension. Now, the one thing that I'm looking at is if these tone rings are the same. So I'm gonna pull this tone ring off, I'm gonna pull this tone ring off, and then I'm also gonna take the reluctor wheel off of here, and then I will grab a known good LBZ reluctor wheel that I have at home, Put the two next to each other, compare them, see if there is any issues with it. Um, I was told that there was a broken tooth on this reluctor wheel, which there is not. So I don't know what the deal is. I'm going to check to make sure it's not bent. I don't know if it's just worn out or what the deal is. So another thing that I can check is the sensors. Maybe it had a bad cam sensor or crank sensor or pigtail. Um... I don't know if that was just something that was overlooked, but basically it's already a part. I'm going through it. I'm going to make sure it's all good before I put it back in the truck. And at that point, you know, hopefully it'll run good. So one thing that concerned me when I was pulling this motor apart was that the flex plate bolts and the harmonic balancer bolt had been reused when the new used motor was thrown back in the truck. Flex plate bolts, not a big deal. Harmonic balancer bolt, definitely a big no-no. You should never reuse the harmonic balancer bolt. And the reason for that is the harmonic balancer is held onto the motor via friction. So it's pressed up against the uh, oil pump drive gear and the oil pump drive gear is pressed up against the crank gear. So GM gets crap about these 
alignment dowels and how they don't do anything and how they should have been a keyway. These are not supposed to keep it from spinning. These are specifically here for alignment purposes only so that everything aligns onto the crank snout. The thing that keeps the gears from spinning on the crankshaft is friction. So one thing that you can do when you do your water pump is when you pull your balancer off, buy a new balancer bolt. Now, I'm not saying I'm against doing uh, keyways. If your motor is already apart and you got the crankshaft out for you know extra insurance, get your crankshaft keyed. I'm all about it. I always get them keyed. Um, it's a great idea, but some people aren't always pulling their motors apart. So when you're doing a water pump or you got to take the balancer off, buy a new bolt. And then when you buy that new bolt and you throw it in there, don't just slam and jam with the impact. Tighten it down to the right torque spec for Pete's sake. <laughs> Can't stress that enough. I know some people might not have a 250 foot pound torque wrench, but they're available at probably AutoZone and probably O'Reilly's. You can buy them and use them. So that's my two cents. Um, in even for extra assurance or insurance, if you don't have a keyed crank, you can also put some red Loctite on the inside of your harmonic balancer as well as on the backside. And you also want to make sure that this surface is clean because if that surface isn't clean and there's oil on it, you have a much higher chance of it spinning. So that's my two cents. Take it as you will. So now I'm going to confirm whether or not it's an LB7 LLY motor or an LBZ LMM motor. First thing I noticed here is that the retainer plate for the cam is different. The LBZs have a circular retainer plate. Uh, the LB7 LOIs have this small football shaped retainer plate. So this is the first thing that I noticed um, after pulling that cam gear off. Another way to find out what block it is, um, is you can pull these main bolts out. The LB7 LOI main bolts are slightly shorter, probably about a quarter inch shorter than the LBZ LMM main bolts. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull these out and compare these to the LBZ LMM cam or uh, main bolts. And you know, nothing against people doing work on their own trucks, but take some pictures, do some research, pay close attention to what you're doing. Because this front cover was pulled off the motor and it's missing half of the front main seal. So as you can see, we got a whole nasty oily mess up here. Why is that? Because this front main seal is not reusable. Someone pulled this front cover off, assuming that you could reuse these front mains. Um, these are one time use. They're press fit. There is an inner race that should be on this pump drive here, but as you can see, there is not one there. So it was simply riding on this portion of the front main. Not good, not the proper way to do it. So pay close attention to stuff like that and do it right, come on. So before pulling the main caps off, I actually went ahead and I pulled the lifters out and the cam out. Not super impressed with how this looks. The lifters are looking uh, pretty rough. Like that looks like it was dry. Like look how scored up these are. And it's not just one of them, it's, it's all of them. They look like they were not lubricated or maybe this motor sat for a while, opened up and there was dirt in it. The cam also does not look super amazing. Uh, this is the worst part right here. That one's pretty bad. Um, these lobes don't look great. They're not, they're not terrible. I'd say they're usable, but they're not going to get reused. I've got a lot of sets of lifters from motors that I've taken apart. So these ones are most definitely going to go in the garbage. Um, they do not look very good. Same with the cam. I've got a different camshaft for it at the house. So that one, scrap. Another possibility is this could have been a bad head gasket motor and 
I mean, the bearings could be washed out from water in the bottom end or anything happening like that. So we keep pulling it apart, check the bearings, and uh, I'll keep you guys updated. Still have not pulled the crankshaft out yet, but we got the rods and pistons out. And I'll tell you what, <laughs> they do not look good either. Oh, brother. Take a look at this guy. This piston is scored up. Like, I don't know what happened here. I don't know if this is a dirty motor or, you know, what the deal is. I'm also not sure if it's ever been rebuilt because I'll tell you one thing. They do not come marked up like this from the factory. So, yep, we're going to keep digging into it. Now that the crankshaft is out, we can start assessing the damage. Now, I don't know what was going on with this motor. I don't know why it was misfiring past 2200 RPM. If it was a reluctor wheel, I probably still wouldn't have ran this motor. Luckily, I was able to tear it apart and see how much damage there was. Um, this is not a healthy motor. I would not run this. Um, I had full intentions of rebuilding a motor for this truck before even purchasing it. So this doesn't affect me in any way, but somewhere down the line, someone definitely got screwed. So here are the mains. Now this is the furthest main back by the flex plate. And this bearing is torched. Um, that, that is rough. These bearings that sit in the block definitely are not the best um, a lot of these rod bearings have discoloration as you can kind of see in there the pistons are they look neglected um, I've never seen an LB7 or LLY bottom end that has this dark of a finish on these pistons and that's like stained in there so this motor definitely saw some neglect and the other thing is, we have one, two, where is the piston squirter at? Well, here it is. It was in the oil pan. So, not sure what happened there. Don't know if it broke off or if it hit something and snapped off or if someone put this motor together and just didn't, wasn't careful enough, beats me. Like I said, somewhere down the line, someone got screwed. I don't know if this motor was rebuilt or not, but the good news is I know it's not one of my motors because I put aftermarket hardware in it, main studs, all that stuff, and I key everything. So yeah, not, not a good sign, not a good motor. I'm not even going to dig any further into it, trying to figure out why it was misfiring. If I'm being honest with you, I think it's the injectors. Um, I'm going to show you the tops of the pistons, and they don't look very good either. So here's the tops of one of the pistons, and this one actually looks much better as compared to the other ones. You can see how much soot build up and how nasty this thing looks. Um, I think it was dumping way too much fuel which means that I believe these injectors are probably no good. Um, this one actually looks all right. The other thing I noticed too, is that the manifold, I didn't check the passenger side, but the driver's side manifold is wet with oil on the inside. So that is definitely no good. If the downpipe had oil in it, that would suspect turbo failure or something of that nature. But if the up pipe, or not the up pipe, well, technically, yes. If the up pipes and the manifolds have oil in it, then it's coming from somewhere in the engine because it's bleeding out of the exhaust ports. And another thing that I noticed is that if you look down there, you can see the wrist pin bushing is protruding out of the small end of the rod. So I don't know if this was caused by too much heat. This piston was probably the one that was in the no squirter hole. So yeah, definitely no good. Um, to reuse this rod, I'd have to get a new wrist pin bushing pushed into it. 
and I'm just not going to do that. I've got rods at home. I've got a good set of LBZ rods. Um, I don't usually run these LB7 rods in my bottom ends, so these are going to go to scrap either way. But yeah, not what I was expecting, if I'm being honest with you. I thought it was maybe a nice, healthy bottom end with some either fuel or cam issues or timing issues, and turns out that the whole thing's pretty much junk. So, so I tilted the motor back up so I could take a look inside these cylinders. And I'm going to tell you right now, this thing sat with water in it. You can tell with this cylinder right here, kind of hard to see, but you can definitely see the discoloration. Um, the water sitting in there definitely corroded up the cylinder. And that's probably why the cylinder walls look like crap and why the piston skirts don't look very good. And if this sat open with water, then I'm assuming there was water that probably sat inside these lifters and that could be why those lifters don't look very good. So don't let your good motors sit outside. And if they have bad head gaskets on them, it's probably a good idea to drain the coolant and drain the oil. That way there's no chance of coolant getting in the motor. So with that information, there could also be a couple cylinders that didn't have very good compression. A lot of factors, um, like I said, motor's not getting used. I'm throwing a whole new one in it. Not going to have any issues with that one. Um, I'm probably going to get a new set of injectors for it just for state of mind. Same with the CP3 and definitely a new turbo because that one is wasted. But like I said, this is the kind of stuff that you have to expect when you're buying a truck that doesn't run or buying a truck that had issues when it ran. So when you're getting into it, expect the worst. Hope for the best.